and away we go. Hello, everybody. How are we doing today? Welcome back to the Ice Bath Sports Podcast. I'm Griff. I'm uh, Matt. And uh, Matt, we just had a really, really good week of football. Oh, well, uh, it was a good week until uh, last night when Seattle absolutely destroyed me and my hopes and dreams and bets. Uh, and well, I think that it's more so Denver to blame. Yeah, I mean, I, not even just Denver. I think Nathaniel Hackett's to blame. He just yeah, he, he, he did not look like his a good debut coach. was not good. And no. uh, if that continues, I think he'll be on the hot seat very, very quickly. Yeah. Yes, a hundred percent. But uh, um, last week we did our week one picks. I did go ten five and one, and you went nine six and one. So we are neck and neck there. Um, no need to really recap all the games because you know we all kind of watched them and paid attention to that, but. We do have another big week coming up. Week two games are looking pretty good. Yeah, um, we got a lot of great matchups, especially Thursday night. Yeah, we yeah that's that's probably the matchup of the week once again. Yep. Um, you know, last Thursday's didn't really end up being the matchup of the week, but on paper it probably was. Um, but yeah, you want to want to just jump right into our picks for this week? Yeah, yeah. So uh, how do you want to do this? Do you want to alternate, or do you want me to? Yeah, I'll, uh, all mine? yeah. That's uh, we'll uh, we'll both set our picks. Okay. Um, so, like 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 what uh, last week they're they're pretty similar again. Yeah, um, very similar. I, I looked at yours quick and I was I was surprised. Yeah, I think the, we have like one different or two different. Yeah, that, it, there's only a couple different, but uh, you know, as the season moves along and we get some more divisional matchups and stuff, I I think we'll have more differentiation there. But uh, like 100%. you said, Thursday we got uh, yeah. Chargers at Kansas City. Yeah, uh, I I have KC to win. Uh, just the absolute abomination of Arizona's defense, uh, you know, got, got really showed off there uh, against KC. KC uh, Mahomes with five touchdowns. Yeah. Know, what, 360 yards, something like that? And he uh, he just looks like classic vintage Mahomes. Uh, you know, last year I feel like he, he kind of had a little bit of a slump. Uh, yeah. But th- this season he looks like he's back to classic Mahomes and – I think uh, he's going to show this here in uh, L.A., who, you know, kind of struggled against Vegas a little bit. They did, and uh, I don't think a lot of it was to blame. Like, I don't think Herbert was to blame there. He played very well, throwing to pretty much nobody's for the most part. Once Keenan Allen went out, he was throwing to DeAndre. I don't even know his last name. Baker? No, it's no. DeAndre. Oh, I don't even know. Something DeAndre. Yeah. And they just did, they didn't look great. I've got Kansas City in this one as well. I think Pat Mahomes torches them. Um, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it's a pretty close game. I don't think it's going to be a close game. Honestly, I know I hate saying that with it being a divisional matchup, but the spread right now uh, is, is minus three and a half. And I, I like KC with those points. Uh, even given those points, um, I think no Keenan Allen's going to yeah, be a no huge Keenan factor. Allen this week. Um, and that defense for the, the Chargers did look pretty solid, but then again, Vegas didn't look all that great. So I'm not sure what to expect there. Uh, Casey is home, so you know extra points to the home team. I've and then we got the uh, starting off Sunday. We got Jets at Cleveland. I am going with the Jets here. Um, <laughs> A little bit of a homer pick, but again, I don't, I don't think Cleveland's very good. They struggled against Carolina. The Jets secondary looked great against Baltimore. Um, granted, Baltimore's receiving core isn't very deep, but neither is Cleveland's. You got Amari Cooper, and if Sauce Gardner could play shutdown corner like he did last week, I think the Jets have a solid shot at winning this one. See, I don't think Amari Cooper's the X factor there. I think it's if you can shut down both Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Yeah. If you can shut down their run game, I mean, but then again, you get you get that, that, that passing game too. Like Kareem Hunt looked like a number one receiver for, for them this this past week, and I'm I'm so mad that I, I benched him. Um, Me too. But he, he looks like a guy that, you know, didn't want to get traded, but he, he did ask for a trade earlier in the season. Um, I have Cleveland winning this game. Just be- I, I mean, I don't blame you, but... Uh... Just because Cleveland looked pretty solid against Carolina. They, they slipped up a little bit, but I think there's a lot of motions running high in that game. And uh, I I, just, I, th- I I think the Jets, as long as they're without Zach Wilson, aren't really going to have much of a shot. Because, uh, I mean, Flacco is Flacco. Yeah. He, he didn't look he, great. Yeah. So... 
All right, we got Washington at Detroit. Washington, a surprise team. We'll uh, we'll talk more about their entire offense pretty much later. But uh, I'm going Detroit here. They look great against Philly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that Philly defense is better than Washington's as well. So I I don't think they're gonna have a problem moving the ball. Um, DeAndre Swift looked really good, and uh, you know Jerry Goff is a sustainable quarterback. I think um, I think Detroit wins this one pretty easily. See, I, I don't think it's going to be an easy game because I think Washington, from what I saw, I know they played the Jaguars, and I know they almost lost against the Jaguars, but they showed a lot of flashes. A lot they of did. flashes. And, I mean, Detroit, they, they looked great against Philly, but also Philly's defense didn't look all that great to me. Um, if Washington's able to even stop the run a little bit, I'm, I'm not sure Detroit's winning this game, but I do have Detroit winning... Uh, I do like Detroit with that spread of minus two. Uh, but again, it, it would not surprise me if, if, you know, Washington came out and, and you know, had a strong, strong showing in Detroit. Got Tampa Bay at New Orleans. Um, I'm going with New Orleans here. Uh, no Chris Godwin might hurt them a little bit on offense. And, uh, you know, New Orleans did not look good against Atlanta for the most part. Um, they pulled one off, a win's a win. Um, at home here, I just like New Orleans and Jameis Winston uh, taking on the Bucks. You know, a little story there. What well, Tom Brady tends to struggle against the Saints too. So that's kind of segues perfectly into what I was going to say. Uh, I believe the Bucks were zero two last year against the Saints, right? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if uh, I don't want to say it and be wrong, but I, I don't know if Brady's beaten the Saints since he's been with Tampa. Yeah, well, it's it's almost like the Saints have. Tampa Tom Bay's Brady. number, yeah, and and Brady's number, uh, and you know New Orleans defense is still pretty good despite you know that that little slip up they had against uh, the Falcons, but I, I think New Orleans takes this one. They're at home, uh, you know, the the uh, offensive line for the Buccaneers, their interior offensive line is like almost non-existent. Yeah. And I think New Orleans is really going to dominate the interior. Yeah, of the and it wasn't there. even like New Orleans played terrible on defense against Atlanta. Their offense was just really bad. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they put it all together here against Tampa. It's going to be a low scoring game. I, I actually kind of like the under on this game. I'm not sure what's at right now, but uh, I do like uh, New Orleans is underdogs. They're getting points, so I would I would take New Orleans even with the points. Um, which is, I think they're going to win. Yeah, I just got I got them winning as well. Next um, up, we have uh, the. Carolina Panthers at uh, MetLife Stadium facing the New York Giants. I'm going the, with the Giants. The New York Giants surprised a lot of people uh, beating the Titans. But then again, the Titans didn't look that great. Uh, I'm not surprised they didn't look that great because you trade away your number one receiver, mm-hmm. your stud receiver. You replace him with a rookie. Uh, and then, yeah, you add Robert Woods, but he didn't really seem like he was much of a factor at all. And the Giants kind of boxed up Derrick Henry. Yeah. It I mean, was... Yeah, uh, that, that that front seven for the Giants is really really underrated. Yeah, but what worries me is their secondary, and I honestly I think Baker Mayfield's gonna have a field day. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, he, but he may, he may. I I got the Giants winning this one. You you've got I have, Carolina, right? I have Carolina. I have yeah. Carolina. Um, Giants are favored. I like Carolina with the points. I don't hate that. Um, I think Brian Dable's a very good coach, though. I think, I think and, he's a great coach. And I would love to see some but success they, out they of him. But they barely beat Tennessee with the skin of their teeth. Carolina has just lost to the Browns. I think, again, that was an emotional game. I think they're going to really take out their anger here in New York. And uh, what better way for Baker Mayfield to take out his frustrations than on the big stage of New York, right? Yeah. Uh, moving on, we got New England at Pittsburgh. Uh, New England's minus one here. They're favored. Yeah, I don't like that. I got Pittsburgh winning it, and uh, you know, I New England just looked awful. Mac yeah. Jones looked terrible. One hundred percent. The defense was not good. I I just don't think New England's going to be very good this year. Now, I also have Pitt. Um, I think New England's going to get their act together. Uh, I think Miami's just a really good team. I think they have a really good coach, Mike McDaniel's. But Pittsburgh's home. Pittsburgh's defense absolutely embarrassed Joe, Joe Burrow. Um, four interceptions for somebody who was, you know, almost won in a Super Bowl last year. Uh, Super Bowl uh, hangover or not, I mean, I, I you still got to be impressed with what Pitt did. Five total turnovers. Pitt is dealing with some injuries now. Uh, they, they TJ are. Watt is out. 
Uh, Cam Hayward got hurt at the end of the game. I think he's all right. And they're saying Najee's all right, but man, having he's that, up, yeah. he's got a little lingering foot injury right now. And was it that, foot or ankle? It came out his foot. I right? think it was foot, and yeah. that that just scares me because I heard something about that in training camp with him too. Mm-hmm. Um, so it seems like it could be a lingering injury. Um, that would scare me a bit as a Najee Harris fantasy owner. Um, thankfully, yeah. I don't have him in any leagues, but I was a little worried. He had so many touches last year. And, you know, look what happened to Derrick Henry with the overusage last year with the foot injury. Right. Um, you 100%. can't be using backs like that anymore. Um, Which, that's to what, my, my point last episode, that's why I think Javante Williams is going to yeah. have a longer career yeah. than Najee yep. Harris. Yep. Because that, that durability thing. You, you give a running back 400 carries a, in a season, Yeah. it's going to take a toll on him. I mean, we're all human. No matter how freakish of these athletes these are, you know, we are all human at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, I think we're in consensus. Pitt takes this one despite yep, their injuries. I agree. Uh, and then next with Indianapolis at Jacksonville, uh, the O O and one Indianapolis Colts. I got the Colts taking this one. Yeah, I mean, you just tied with the Texans, uh, and there's also a lot. Again, back to the whole emotions. Uh, the Colts have a lot of anger against Jacksonville for knocking them out oh, of the playoffs yeah, last big season. Time. Um, it was this whole reason they shipped off Carson Wentz. Uh, they brought in Matt Ryan. So I think that this is going to be a, a bit of a blowout of a game. Um, as much as I, I like Jacksonville, and I think that they will look better towards the end of the season, I think they still have a lot to figure out. Uh, and I think Indianapolis does have a lot of things figured out, um, especially after last week. I just think they underestimated Houston. Yeah, I think Jonathan Taylor has a field day in this game. Yeah. You got Miami at Baltimore. I will be in attendance of this game. Um, I've got Baltimore winning it. Baltimore. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. I, I Baltimore's home. Uh, Miami did look good against New England, mm-hmm. but I don't think Miami's defense is ready for Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I uh, I don't think so either. Baltimore, I just saw they're without Kyle Fuller for the rest of the year now. Um, that's kind of a big hit to the secondary, especially if Marcus Peters still isn't healthy. Yeah. But I still think Baltimore takes this one. I think Lamar Jackson uh, runs a bit more than he did last week, and I uh, think he'll he'll look more towards um, Mark Andrews in this one. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, you got Atlanta at the Rams. Whose house? Well, Rams house. The Rams got to bounce back here. The, yeah, um, this, he, this has got to be a statement game for them. 100%. Um, Matt Stafford's going to come out hot, I think. he's He knows he has some stuff to prove now after that piss-poor performance. Hor- horrendous. I had him in fantasy. I, I can. Yeah, it was it was it. just a terrible performance all around by the entire team. But I think the Rams come out hot. I think they established the run early. Um, we'll get into it more. I think Akers gets involved a lot this week. Um, Interesting. I, I, think, I think the Rams take this one pretty easily. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go with easily because I thought Broncos were going to handle business and easily take care of Seattle. But I, I do think the Rams take this one, um, but not by much. Atlanta looked better than, than people were going to give them credit for. I do think the Rams have a lot of weaknesses, especially on that offensive line. Uh, I, I, I like the Rams to win, but if you, I'm a betting man, I'm taking uh, Atlanta's with the, with the points plus okay. 10. Yeah. Okay, we got Seattle at San Fran. Um, you know, I I like San Fran a lot in this. I know they just lost to Chicago, but those field conditions were atrocious. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand how anybody can play. I don't understand how you can even have a game. Yeah, with, with, with the field being in the condition it was in. I'll take that performance by Lance with a grain of salt. Um, I'm not super high on Trey Lance, but I I think he could do a lot more with those weapons in the offense than what he did against Chicago. That was just. You can't throw the ball in that. No. No, you, you absolutely cannot. And and running even is difficult because you're, you're kind of cautious when you're running because you're, you're afraid you're going to you know, slip, fall, twist an ankle, tear an ACL. Like, it's it's not suitable conditions. But I also have the Niners uh, winning this game. But I think it's going to be a really close game. I think it could be. I think uh, looked if really good. he did. If uh, if Kittle's back, though, I think uh, I think Kittle has a pretty big day. Uh, I, I would still take uh, Seattle getting eight and a half. Yeah, I think that's kind of a lot after seeing what they did last night. Yeah. Um, the offense was a lot better than it's everyone bold. thought. Yep. 
Yeah, well, I mean, it makes sense. They have offensive weapons. Yeah. They just needed a quarterback. And yeah. Geno <laughs> Smith did the job. So <laughs> He did. As, as long as Geno Smith's playing like he did, I mean, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they were wild card contenders, yeah. honestly. I mean, because the NFC is kind of weak. Now we got a uh, we got a tough one, four one team. We got Cincy at Dallas. This is going to be a, t- a tough game for Dallas. Oh yeah, <laughs> really tough game for them boys. Uh, <laughs> we got Cooper Rush coming in. Um, I mean, I Jerry Jones came out today and said they're not putting Dak on IR because they think he could be ready. Huge mistake. Yeah, I, th- I, I think that comes back to bite them in the butt. I, think, I agree. I think he re-injures that thumb. I think some, something's going to happen. And it's going to absolutely derail their season, um, but Cooper Rush, man, uh, they they better Jerry Jones better be on the phone right now with like the 49ers and, and trying to get Jimmy Garoppolo because or anyone I would even yeah. I'd I'd take Drew Locke over uh, Cooper Rush. At this I also point. saw that they were linked to maybe signing Cam Newton. Yeah, uh, who Ooh. might be the only person who's not an upgrade over. Cooper Rush. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I have Cincy uh, here in a landslide. I think Cincy absolutely bounces back from the loss, and this this is the statement game of the week right here. I think Cincinnati is going to put up at least five, six touchdowns against Dallas. Yeah, look for a big game from Jamar Chase. Uh, Trayvon, yeah. Trayvon, I think Trayvon Diggs gets exposed this week. Mm-hmm. I think Jamar Chase puts up close to two hundred. That's my bold take of the week. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm 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 with that. I I could see that. Uh, next, we got Houston at Denver. As much as I like the 0-0-1 Houston Texans, uh, I do have to take Denver here. Yeah, I think uh, I think they have a lot to prove. Nathaniel Hackett has a lot to prove now um, with all the criticism. I think uh, Denver puts together a solid game offensively. Um, I would expect a lot out of the running backs in this one, though. Yeah, I, if you lose this game to the Texans, yeah, Hackett's in a lot of trouble. Hackett, yeah, it might, it might be a one and done season because oh, yeah. if you can't beat the Houston Texans, who are are better than people are giving them credit for, uh, you're not going to be able to beat the Chargers or the Raiders or the uh, Chiefs. Yeah, like come on, no, uh, you, you this is a must win game for Denver. Uh, with that said, I do have Houston with the points if I'm a betting man. We got Arizona at Vegas. Um, I'm going to go with Vegas on this one. Um, yeah, the Cardinals I, just did not look good. No, no, uh, and Kyler Murray. Clearly, I don't know if you saw the, the the stuff that was on Twitter, but he had horrible reads. Yeah. He does not know how to read a defense, mm-hmm. and he like there was one where he took a sack on third down um, because he, you know he could not identify the hot route. And I saw, just, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah, and, and he he just does not look. Like a, a number one overall pick. I would like to point out it is double XP weekend than Call of Duty, so I don't I don't think Arizona does much. <laughs> yeah, no, I think Vegas takes this. Also, Vegas is coming off a loss. They have something to prove. Derek Par- Derek Carr had a, a horrible performance, and uh, I think he bounces back this week. I think he throws for four touchdowns against Arizona. I like that. Uh, Chicago at Green Bay is the Sunday night game. Um, I'm going Green Bay here. Um, this is going to be a little bounce back game too. Yeah, I don't think the Bears are very good. They won a game in tough conditions. I'll give them credit there, but uh, I think Aaron Rodgers will realize that he's got to do something big in this game. Um, I think he relies on Aaron Jones a lot more. He mm-hmm. wasn't utilized much. I think uh, him and AJ Dillon will both be used a lot in this game. Now Green Bay was without two of their best offensive linemen last week mm. in David Bakhtiari and Alton Jenkins. Yeah, if they're able to get those two key pieces of the offense back uh i think i think it's it's going to be an absolute massacre yeah um but uh who knows i i would still that's a lot of points minus 10 uh i would still take chicago with the points but i think this game is going to be one on the ground uh and in the trenches so i i think green bay takes this uh but i don't think they take it by double digits so we got two monday night games this week the first one is tennessee at buffalo i'm going buffalo here yeah, how can you not? I mean, Tennessee looked mid against the Giants. Very, very and, mid. And Buffalo looked elite against the Rams. I think that's all we need to say, really. Buffalo made the defending Super Bowl champions look like the Jets. No offense. Damn. Well, I mean, I'm just trying to <laughs> yeah. think of, like, within, like, their division, somebody that's perennial. Fair enough. You know, 
poor performance. And then the uh, the second Monday night game, we got Minnesota at Philly. This is going to be a good game. I really want to do a reverse jinx and take Minnesota to win, but I, I don't know how. I, I, I got to go Philly. It's going to be, it's gonna be interesting to see how, how the Eagles try to contain Justin Jefferson because that's something that the Green Bay Packers cannot do, and I know Jonathan Gannon loves, loves, loves to run that zone defense. Mm-hmm. He's a bend-don't-break type of guy, and uh, I think that's going to burn them. But I, th- I don't think Minnesota is going to be able to keep up on offense with Philly. Yeah, I think this. I, I do think this ends up being one of the best games of the week, though. One hundred percent. It's going to be a, a great Monday night game. Uh, I wish it wasn't at eight o'clock on a Monday. No. But hey, this this should be the the Sunday night game or Sunday afternoon game, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. All but, right. Um, we got our parlay picks of the week. Yours hit last week. It did. It did. Money moves. Money moves. I'm uh. It made me a nice clean eighty two dollars and seventy cents. <laughs> there you go. All right, who you got this week? So my my pick for the uh, the parlay picks of the week, uh, I got the Pitt money line, the Indianapolis money line. I have the Bengals minus seven and a half. I have New Orleans getting three points, uh, and that's going to be odds of one thousand sixty six for those four picks. Which ten dollars you're going to win. You know, hundred six dollars. So I think that's that's a great value there. Uh, Pittsburgh, we already discussed. I mean, they're they're getting a point. Yeah. Uh, Indy bounce back game. They should win that game hands down. Bengals should blow out and Dallas. Bengals should blow out a, a Cooper Rush led Dallas team. And uh, New Orleans just has Tampa's number. So a couple underdogs here with Pitt uh, in New Orleans, mm-hmm. but uh, I think that's gonna really add a lot of value and obviously it is because it's plus 1066 odds for four leg parlay which is incredible so my parlay pick of the week i also have cincinnati cincinnati minus seven and a half the dolphins and ravens over 43 and a half the lions minus two and a half and the raiders money line for plus 878 odds i will say that lions lions line scares me a little bit yeah just because washington couldn't be sneaky good this year and they're you know whenever you're given points and it's that close of a matchup yeah you know i i, I could i could easily see this be a one point game i i agree um but i i like the uh your other three picks there all right so let's get into some week two sleepers for fantasy football last week it was kind of on the money i yep. said devin duvernay he puts up four catches over 80 yards and two touchdowns. I say Gabe Davis. He goes three catches, 88 yards, and a tutty. And Curtis Samuel. Look, he have, was getting utilized like have, Debo Samuel. Have a freaking day, Curtis Samuel. So uh, 11 targets, eight catches. Like, come on. So let's uh, let's nail some more sleepers here. Um, my first sleeper, I've got Chase Edmonds. Um, in week one, he had 12 carries for only 25 yards against the Patriots. He had four receptions for 40 yards. They're facing the Ravens this week, um, who in week one allowed six yards per attempt to Michael Carter, um, who was also a threat in the receiving game. I think Chase Edmonds could put up very similar numbers against that Ravens defense um, and could definitely be a strong flex or RB3 candidate going into this week. Okay. My second sleeper, I like Greg Dortch. Um, oh, Dortch. The Dortch. Get torched by Dortch. He's going to be on waivers. There's probably no way anyone in your league has him. Um, or knows who he is, even after that performance. Yeah. Um, coming off a game where he had seven catches for 63 yards, he proved he could be a viable target for Kyler until D-Hop comes back. Um, you know, A.J. Green only had two catches. There's not many options right now. You've got Rondale Moore there, but I, I like Dortch a lot. Um, week two, he's playing the Raiders, who had a terrible secondary against backup receivers uh, for the Chargers. Um, you know, I just I, I like this this pickup a lot. If you could get him on waivers pretty easily, um, you don't probably think... don't even need to put in for him on waivers. You could probably pick him up, you know, next After day. After waivers, yeah, clear, and, yeah, and, and and save your waiver wire spot. But what says a lot to me about Greg Dortch is the fact that he had so much production in comparison to A.J. Green. Oh, I know. I thought A.J. Green was going to be the number one. I, I thought he was going to show out uh, no uh, Rondale Moore, but I-, I don't think Rondale Moore coming back is really going to affect Greg Dortch's uh, value much because I-, I think he- he's really carved himself out a role. 
I think they're going to see what he did in week one, and they're going to want to utilize him a little more. I agree. Um, my third one, I got Braxton Berrios from my Jets. Um, with Flacco still starting, the Jets O-line is not looking good at all right now. The ball is going to have to come out quick when you are passing. Um, Berrios is going to have a high volume against the Browns pass rush uh, this week when they're getting to Flacco pretty quickly. And being their slot guy there, I like Berrios. Yeah, yeah, Berrios. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just realizing that I'm wearing a green hat on the screen screen and when we put this on YouTube, it's, it's not going to bode well for uh, the editing. Oh, nice. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, next up, we got Jeff Wilson. You want to take it away, Griffin? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like Jeff Wilson a lot here um, because Eli Mitchell's out for two months. You know, Wilson, it seems like every year he comes in and has a week where he gets a start, he gets a couple starts, and he looks pretty effective. Um, you know, you're picking up their running back, I'll put it in quotes one, because you still have Debo Samuel who got eight carries for 51 yards and a touchdown last week. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I like Jeff Wilson to come in. There's going to be a solid workload there. Um, and I think he could be a pretty good flex option. Um, just seeing how, uh, they use running backs in that offense. Yeah. Um, so those are just sleepers. Uh, I have my waiver wire watch picks um, as well. I I have I'll start off with Jeff Wilson since you're just talking about mm-hmm. him. Um, you know, he's the next man up. You know, Eli Mitchell's out for two months. Wilson looks to be the new guy in San Fran. Uh, again, you just never know, though. You never know. Jeff Wilson has this opportunity almost every year, and he's never really capitalizes on it. And then you to your point you have Debo Samuel coming up who he gets a lot of running plays and uh not to mention Trey Lance led that team in carries last week with 13 well I will tell you I uh as a Debo Samuel owner I'm very happy but as an Elijah Mitchell owner as well in the same exact league I'm not happy but you know the Debo value is going to be there um yeah. as a runner now that Eli Mitchell's out I I think Debo is going to be very good for the next two months yeah yeah I think Debo's going to be elite I think he's somebody that can really um, get you to the playoffs. Uh, in addition to Jeff Wilson, I'll, I'll list off my, my other uh, waiver wire watch uh, candidates. You got Carson Wentz, um, my guy. Talk about the Carson Wentz redemption tour. Uh, he had over 300 yards passing and four touchdowns in week one. He did have two terrible picks. Yeah, granted, he also <laughs> did play the, the Jaguars. And, and he, he almost lost that game. But, he almost did lose that game. But he got him back in we're, it. We're talking about fantasy value right yeah, now. We're not yeah. talking about you know franchise quarterbacks. Um, you know, he had I, one of the leagues I, I played, and he had like 38 points oh, in yeah. fantasy. Yeah. He went off. Um, but, you know, he almost looked like the reincarnation of his 2017 self. Uh, he had a lot of flashes of that. Yeah. Um, and speaking of 2017 self, uh, that was Wentz's first game throwing four touchdowns since 2017 where he did it versus the Rams in the same game that he had that devastating knee injury where he tore his ACL and I think it was his MCL. Um, and one of those touchdowns he threw with the torn uh, ACL. Um, but that's aside the point. Uh, I think the amount of weapons that's in Washington on that offense – uh, I think it puts Wentz at a weekly high end quarterback two with elite quarterback one upside. Mm-hmm. Um, and Washington also gets Detroit this week, who just allowed 38 points to the Eagles in a game where Jalen Hurts had over 300 yards between rushing and passing. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of value to stream him, especially if you, you had um, Dak and, and you don't have Dak anymore because that that thumb injury. But there's one problem with Com- Commander Carson, and that's uh, you don't know what version you're going to get of him. Uh, you know, he, he can be inconsistent. He's going to be putting up week one numbers one week, and then he's going to be throwing four interceptions yeah. to one touchdown and 200 yards the next week. So you never know with Wentz. Um, but we'll stick to the same team. Uh, bring up next with Curtis Samuel. Uh, I'm, you called this last <laughs> week. You called the Curtis Samuel breakout. I did. I there's just something about Curtis Samuel to, where you get him that quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got Carson Wentz there now, and I just saw the upside there because you know you got the rookie John Dotson, who's another guy that looked great. Yeah. Um, you mix him in with Terry McLaurin, 
uh, Curtis Samuel doesn't have to be the guy, but like I said, he's going to be the gadget guy in that offense. Yep. Yeah, he, he's 100% that gadget guy. Um, he had eight catches on 11 targets for 55 yards and a touchdown. He also had, I think, three carries. Not many yards, but he was getting some carries. Yeah, I mean, those are wide receiver one numbers in fantasy. 11 targets. Yeah. Um, I'm sure this type of production and usage isn't going to stay consistent because no. you have McLaurin, you have Dotson uh, also running routes, but it's pretty clear that Wentz was more than comfortable dumping off to Curtis Samuel, and that consistency uh, is a major concern, but the value should not be overlooked. He's definitely somebody to stash on your bench, and if this continues to be a week-to-week thing, hey, start, he's a guy I would start. start. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up, I-, I love, love Robbie Anderson after what he did last week. Yeah. Now, it appears that the Robbie Anderson-Baker Mayfield beef is over uh, as Anderson led the Panthers with eight targets in Week 1, which was uh, two ahead of their true number 1 receiver in DJ Moore. Uh, But what stands out to me was how much more productive Robbie Anderson was with those targets. He hauled in five catches, 102 yards, and a touchdown. uh, But he also has competition with DJ Moore and McCaffrey. Yeah. Um, But that's going to work to his benefit because they're going to be drawing coverage, uh, and this is going to bring more value to... Uh, to Anderson, and I think he's a strong wide receiver three right now. Yeah, Robbie Anderson's um, a true solid deep threat. Mm-hmm. Um, you, if you could get him over the top, he's going to catch big 50, 60, 70 yard touchdowns. Yeah, uh, especially this week where Carolina is looking to bounce back and they have a juicy matchup with the Giants defense that is still trying to find their identity a little bit. Uh, I don't really believe too much in the Giants' uh, secondary. You got Xavier McKinney, but I don't really think they have anybody else besides yeah. that. Darnay Holmes looked Big Burnt. play Darnay. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, that brings us to our last last option, O.J. Howard for the Houston Texans. Is he the next Tony Gonzalez or something like that? Uh, if it comes on late <laughs> in his career. Um, although Howard only finished week one with two receptions off of two targets, it was clear that uh, he was Davis Mills' go-to guy in the red zone. Yeah. Both of those catches went for touchdowns. Um he also had like 30 something yards on top of that. So he had a, a really, really solid day for a tight end in fantasy football. Um, and although the Houston offense isn't all that spectacular, they were fairly efficient. Uh, and I think OJ Howard is a streamlined touchdown dependent tight end. I wonder if he continues to see these red zone looks. Yeah. So, real quickly, some trade targets. I know it's early in the season, but you mm-hmm. got to keep an eye out. Like a couple of these guys, you could buy low and buying low if you could get. Pop off and win yeah. the league. Yeah. Cam Akers. Um, I was critical of Akers. And as much as I want to sit here and say, yeah, I was right. Daryl Henderson's a better value pick. I think it was clear that Akers wasn't healthy. You could tell that by Daryl Henderson getting the start. Then he looked so sluggish when he played. He did. It, it, he looked like he's he had something He definitely nagging. had something wrong with him. But if you could snag him for a couple bench pieces, like a low-end wide receiver three, a running back three, something like that, because I know people are going to be scared and want to yeah. at least get some value for him, I would jump all over that. Yeah, yeah. People are going to be jumping off that boat, uh, and now is the time to buy low on Cam Akers because, you know, you can give up, again, a wide receiver three, an RB three, and there's a lot of upside there. He's 23 years old. Uh, he was incredible at Florida state. Yeah. You know, if he's able to bounce back, I think you're looking at Dalvin cook, like upside, like I've said before. Yeah. Uh, next one, Julio Jones, Chris Godwin's out. Um, doesn't seem like it's going to be a serious hamstring injury, but man, he, that injury bug keeps hitting him. Mm -hmm. Um, Jones looked very explosive against Dallas and he's going to step into that wide receiver two role there. And he'll step in pretty easily. I, I mean, it's, it's Julio Jones. Right now, it's a great time to buy, especially if you have uh, Chris Godwin or little wide receiver depth. Um, and then the last one, I like this one. This was uh, this was all you here. Yeah, uh, I, as as a Philly fan, um, I'll die on this hill. Devonta Smith, uh, he was targeted four times last week, but left with zero catches. Um, <laughs> I know because I started him uh, in my flex in almost every league. I loved his value this year, and. I mean, any player that lays a goose egg is going to be valued lower. But looking at the big picture here, you got A.J. Brown, who is going to start getting doubled, especially after how dominant he was against yeah. Detroit. Uh, you put up 155 yards, uh, you're going to have defenses game planning for you. So 
with that, I mean, Devonta Smith is a clear number two option. He has elite route running abilities. Uh, and I think he's going to be beating almost every cornerback two on his routes because of these route running abilities. And, and, you know, who's cornerback two is going to be able to, to cover something yeah, like that. I, Some, agree. Somebody I, that I agree completely. I mean, you had great reports coming out of camp. I think this was a fluke. The guy finished with 900 yards as a rookie, and he's a couple of years removed from a Heisman winning season in college at Alabama, where, you know, Alabama just doesn't take any bloke off the street. They, they take the best, of the best. So uh, I think Devonta Smith will bounce back and you can buy in on him now for really, really cheap. All right, let's get into some questions. Uh, you know, we do this every episode, so if you guys want to leave some questions, our DMs are open, or you can leave it in the comments on our social medias, at Ice Bath Sports on Instagram and TikTok, and at Ice Bath Pod on Twitter. Um, first question, do you think Noah Brown could be a solid bench option? Um, personally, I don't think so. You've got Cooper Rush coming in. I, I think, if anything, Tony Pollard is going to see more targets out of the backfield you're gonna go to Dalton Schultz and you're gonna have to throw to CeeDee Lamb um Noah Brown I wouldn't get too caught up in his nine targets five catches over we had over 60 yards a lot of that was in garbage time and I'd rather personally I'd rather pick up a guy like Greg Dortch for the bench now I I I'm on the opposition here with against you uh, because I think that Noah Brown can be a solid bench option uh, if you're in a deep 12 or 14 man league um, because he's probably developed chemistry with Cooper Rush. You know they've probably both played together on this you know second t- string offense. Yeah. And that chemistry, I mean, you come in a game that can't be undervalued. You know, Ceedee Lamb and Cooper Rush probably aren't as familiar as he as one another, but you know, Noah Brown may be Cooper Rush's uh, CD lamb to Dak Prescott. Well, to Dak Prescott, you know, um, you, you have th- those receivers that these backups really like going to and nine targets in week one. Um, I, I think Noah Brown, at least for the time that uh, Dak's out, I think could provide some solid, some solid depth. All right. Yeah. I mean, I think he provided more value for fantasy with Dak there. Um, Dak's experience would, you know, he could read progressions better than a guy like Cooper Rush could. And, you know, Noah Brown, he's not not very explosive, but he's just kind of a big body guy that could, you know, catch little underneath or medium routes. Um, I don't know. I just, I think now is a little too early to jump on a Noah Brown bandwagon. Yeah. I mean, I, I would, I would wait. Um, unless you're in like again like a 14 man league where yeah. it's it's hard to come across guys in waivers, um, but I, I I do think that there is something there with Cooper Rush and his chemistry with Noah Brown. Like again, they're playing with each other on that that second string offense. You're developing a chemistry. You're developing a bond with this guy, uh, and I think that's gonna see him more targets than Ceedee Lamb is. All right, do you think Devin DuVernay can have a better fantasy season than Bateman? I think it's possible. Yeah. Um, they they are very different receivers. Um, Bateman's just a bigger body guy that'll go up and get it, but he can also stretch the field. DuVernay is just kind of a sneaky good player and always has been, but he's just been kind of buried in the depth chart. I loved him out of Texas, hook him horns. Um, DuVernay is... He's someone that I think he has a monster year, and I'm stash. I I have him. I'm starting him next week. I don't care. I've got some injuries on my team, so I have some openings. But you know, I I think he could be a solid number two option next to Mark Andrews. I think people got way too caught up in Bateman being the number one and being the clear cut guy. Um, Bateman's a great option. But I think De- Devin DuVernay's upside is just there. So for me, um, possibly, but I, I honestly think you're a little too high on DuVernay. Um, I think Mark Andrews is the clear-cut number one option oh, yeah, there yeah. in yeah. Baltimore. Yeah. yeah, right. So I think Bateman and DuVernay are fighting for the, the second scraps, but I think it's going to be 1A, 1B. I think it's going to be kind of in- inconsistent. I don't think he's going to be reliable every week. I think he's one of these guys that... You know, one week it's going to be Bateman's time to shine. One week it's going to be Duvernay. Um, 
I mean, Bateman, they invested a first-round pick in. I love mm. Bateman coming out of Minnesota. He looked like a, a Oh, stud. yeah, no. Bateman was one of my favorite receivers in that draft class. Yeah. I, I love him They, they as invest well. in, in, in yeah. Bateman. They're going to use Bateman. Um, I, I think Duvernay, it, you know, him breaking out last week was definitely a plus for the Ravens' offense. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that that's something that should be expected every week. Fair enough. Um, the final question we got here is. Uh, with Curtis Samuel seeing eleven targets in Week One, should that scare Terry McLaurin owners? I don't. I don't think so. Um, Not at all. That offense does have a lot of pieces, and Wentz has a lot of options to get the ball to. We already talked about Samuel. You got Jahan Dotson, who was a great wide receiver prospect out of Penn State. Right. Um, but Terry McLaurin is still that guy. Like Terry McLaurin's going to get the most targets. He's going to put up the biggest numbers. He's the top receiver in this league. Yeah. He uh, like talent wise, McLaurin is is top ten. He's oh a yeah, top ten receiver. I think he's pushing top five. Like Terry McLaurin is a very very good wide receiver. He's very polished. He's good at almost everything. Yeah. Um, I just think it's a, a relationship issue. I think him and Wentz need to develop that that, that connection a little better. I agree. Uh, and I think that's going to take a couple weeks, but I I don't think you should give up on Terry McLaurin, and I, I sure as hell don't think that. Curtis Samuel is going to take over McLaurin as the one. Uh, two yeah. totally different types of players. McLaurin is a pure receiver. Curtis Samuel was a running back coming out of college that they converted to receiver. Yeah. Um, he's one of these guys that is uh, a hybrid option. He's one of these wide backs almost. And um, I, I just, you know, look, look at last year. Jonathan Taylor wasn't elite until like week four. That's it, very true. It took him some time to catch on. Yeah. I think McLaurin's going to be the same way. Do I think he's going to be the best fantasy player in, in the league? No, but I think he has a lot, a lot of upside, and I think it's just going to be a matter of time before he starts showcasing yeah, he's, out Yeah, he's, he's, like you said, he's one of the most talented wide receivers in the league. I I would not give up too early, and I just I wouldn't get scared of other guys getting targets. I think they're going to be a pretty pass-first offense. Um, when you have guys like that, you've got Curtis Samuel, you've got Jahan Dotson, You've got Logan Thomas. You've got Deami Brown. Like yep. they've got. Don't die on me, Brown. What? Don't die on me, Brown. Yeah, no. And then you've got uh, you got Gibson out of the backfield. Like it's going to be a pass first offense, and McLaurin's going to get his touches. Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. Um, I think it's gonna it's gonna it may take a week or two before you see it, but you know McLaurin is gonna be one of these guys. He's gonna be perennial a thousand plus yard receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's gonna be productive. So. All right, before we wrap it up, I got a brand new segment. Can Matt guess this random player by his week one stats? All right, all right. Defense or offense? This is an offensive player. Offensive player, all right. I'll look the other way, so okay. uh, nobody thinks I'm cheating. I, I don't have the name written down. I just have his stats written down. You're good. Okay. He had four carries for 47 yards, two catches for 18 yards, and this is a guy that a lot of people were extremely high on. Extremely high on. He had four catches for 47 yards. Or four carries for 47 yards. Two catches for 18 yards. Four carry. Okay. You're going to need to give me the, the conference. He's an AFC player. AFC player. Okay. Um, it's not going to be one of these top running backs, I don't think. It's going to be somebody lesser than that. You said people were high on him this year? A lot of people were high on him, like, around 6 to 8, pretty much. He's, okay, ADP of around 6 to 8. Maybe a little yeah. earlier, depending on the league. A- AFC. Oh, All right. I'm not going to ask for division. I feel like that's a little a little much. Was it... Um, was it... Ramondre Stevenson? It was not. It was not. Okay. Can you give me the division then? Is the AFC South. AFC South. Was it Damien Pierce? No. It wasn't Damien Pierce. I know Damien Pierce had, had Yeah, really Pierce, slow, had a, Pierce had Pierce had a rough week. start. But I will give you another hint. This was this guy's first career NFL game. First career NFL game. Okay. That may throw you off though. Was it Travis Etienne? It was Travis Etienne. James Robinson, I believe, is the RB1 there still. James 100%. Robinson had been, a great I've been week. Saying, I've been you have that. been saying that. And James Robinson is coming off a great week. ETN just did not get his touches. He had six touches total, and he was effective. There were a couple plays that 
you know, Lawrence was looking his way, and either he wasn't open or he just dropped the ball. Yeah. From from when I watched the game, what I saw. Yeah, but I, I – uh, James Robinson is one of those guys where if you could try we, – we even talked about it early on. If you could try to trade for a guy like that, you want to go do it. Right, right. So I think that's going to wrap up everything that we have uh, to offer here for this week. Yeah. And uh, let's hope we get another great week of football. Uh, yeah, let's hope so. Um, as always, we will see you guys next Tuesday. We'll always do our episodes right after all the games are finished. So we can recap everything, talk fantasy about everything, and you know, go over the next week, trade targets, sleepers, everything like that. So if you guys have any suggestions, any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us on social media. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning into the ice bath. Stay cool. It's it's getting there. <laughs>